One year ago, Dr. Christian's feeding clinic opened its doors to eight super sizes and eight super skinnies. For the first time, we brought them together to confront their disastrous eating habits. I'm always getting told that I should um, eat more pies. You should, but you shouldn't <laughs> eat as many as I do. <laughs> Tonight, we're revisiting super skinny Hayley Payne and super sizer Jeff Milton, whose dreadful diets were laid bare when they each entered the feeding clinic. I like the, I like the taste of a bacon sandwich. Bacon and egg, bacon and tomato. Bacon, egg and tomato. Tea and sugar addict Hayley wasn't a fan of food. Food completely takes a back seat in my life. Unlike bread binger Jeff. Probably four or five slices of bread, maybe six sometimes. Who faced up to a frightening possible future in America. You get the infection, you end up losing the whole leg. One year on, have the disastrous diets gone for good? I love eating that. I've got so much more energy than I did before. Plus, we'll be looking back at Dr Christian's visit to Evansville, the city that topped the polls in 2011 as America's fattest. And all of a sudden, I heard this crunch, you know, and then this gush of blood. For an alarming picture of what might be the future for us here in the UK if we don't change our ways. One year ago, Dr. Christian travelled stateside to the city of Evansville, Indiana. This bulging city has a population of over 117,000 and almost 38% of them were classed as obese. Do you think this is a losing battle? Sometimes it feels like a losing battle. Dr. Christian witnessed the struggles that come with being grossly overweight. Did you ever imagine you'd need all of this? Sometimes I wish I didn't, you know, I didn't have all this fluid, because it does cause a lot of problems. And spent time with those who are trying to tackle the problem from within their community. All right, so we've got God in our souls, our spirits. Is everybody ready to work out? Yeah! The Deaconess Hospital in Evansville is at the forefront of the fight against fat. This state-of-the-art facility houses its very own weight loss surgery centre and a bustling diabetes unit. With over a third of patients overweight or obese, they've got their work cut out. Obesity-related heart problems are all too common, and today Carmelo Ramos, who weighs 28 and a half stone, has been rushed in. Mr. Ramos came in with some chest pain, so they want to do a screening for any significant blockages in the heart arteries. To find out how well Carmelo's heart is functioning, he needs to have a cardiac stress test. Usually, this would be done using a treadmill, but due to Carmelo's size, the doctors have to do an alternative procedure. Dr. Moore's come in to administer the drug that's going to speed up our patient's heart. This will stimulate the effects of exercise so he can assess how the heart is functioning when it's working hard. Now, if this may make your heart speed up even more, OK, don't be alarmed. Carmelo's heart is now beating at the rate it would be if he were running. His blood pressure is 235 over 117. I just went to 40 max of W to me. Blood pressure of 235 over 117 is getting on for fairly high. So you can see now on the screen, his heart is really banging away. The patient's not very comfortable because it's, it's quite an anxious feeling, this. Despite the chest pains, Carmelo's heart is functioning normally. Can you rate your pain for me right now, zero to ten? Oh, God, it's a nine. However, for some, obesity has more permanent consequences. Next, Dr Christian's visiting patients in the hospital's wounds clinic. In the US, over 25 million people suffer from type 2 diabetes, which can lead to chronic wounds like foot ulcers. Between 14 and 24% of diabetic patients who develop foot ulcers end up having an amputation. I got out of the tub and all of a sudden I heard this crunch, you know, and then this gush of blood. Oh. Anyway, I went to the emergency room uh. and um, they told me that I had crushed my bones oh. in my heel. 
so um, they had to cut it off because the bones had got so infected bacteria in them. What do you think caused all of this in you? Uh, my diabetes. What about things like lifestyle and weight and diet and stuff like that? How's that been for you? <laughs> oh dear, that's a giveaway, <laughs> that giggle. Yeah, I was eating my sweets and the one oh. I wasn't supposed to. So you were putting away and eating yeah. naughty things? Uh, yeah. So how heavy were you then at your biggest? 299 was my heaviest. That's quite a lot. Yes. Those were bad days? Yes. But not now? No. You're going to get it together? Yeah, because I look at it like this. I have a 13-year-old child, and I'd rather be without a leg than dead. Because I know gangrene could set up, um, anything could have really happened badly. So it's like God has given me a second chance. Taiwan is only 48, which in medical terms is, is very young. And for me, the really sad part is the fact that actually all this could have been prevented if Taiwan had only managed her weight and her diabetes better early on. But now there's no going back. Dr. Christian's bringing the lessons he's learned in Evansville back to Britain as he tackles dietary crimes at both ends of the scale. He's sizing them up before he pairs them off and offers them a table for two at his feeding clinic. So, Rob, come forward. And I want to match you up with Hayley. Oh, yeah. Hi. Hi. I'm sorry, but I've never met anyone as big as yourself. <laughs> You've got bigger boobs than I am. <laughs> I think she was a bit shocked the size of me. I was a bit shocked with the size of her, because of the bones with the back and the sides. Rob and Haley may be the same age and height, but when it comes to their diets and waistlines, they couldn't be more different. Haley is incredibly focused about what she eats, whereas Rob just eats mindlessly. I'm hoping that their time in the feeding clinic will show them how extreme their diets have become. Mortgage advisor Haley Payne from Suffolk may be the same age as Rob, but incredibly, she's almost 30 stone lighter at only 6 stone 12. That's because she's always on the go, and eating barely gets a look in. Food completely takes a back seat in my life. It's something that I know you have to do to keep alive, but it's a bit of an inconvenience for me because it takes up my time. I run on quite a lot of nervous energy. The day I stop will be the day I crash. In fact, hyperactive Haley gets through the day on just spoonfuls of sugar and copious cups of tea. I love tea an awful lot. And come the evening, any remaining energy is spent on cooking for others, especially new husband, Chris. I tend to like to pile his plate up quite a lot because I like to see that he's eating a good amount. Mine tends to be a third of what he eats. Yeah, Haley's portions always fit for a sparrow, whereas mine is enough for an elephant to eat. I'm surprised I'm not 20 stone <laughs> the way I eat. Haley married Chris six months ago. But the realisation she'd become a bony bride has prompted her to want to change her ways. My wedding day was definitely the biggest day of my whole life. I felt like I was the one that let it down by being so skinny. Haley's now at risk of damaging her health and being infertile, and obviously as a newly married couple or something we discussed, children and things like that. I want people to look at me and think I'm healthy because I do want to have a family in the future. So massively determined just to start to feel healthy and get my life sorted, really. Joining Haley in Dr Christian's feeding clinic is Rob. He's attempting to break his own dangerous dietary habits by swapping diets with Haley, whose unwillingness to eat is putting her health at risk. First up, it's breakfast, and for Haley, it's one of Rob's gargantuan fry-ups, whilst Rob is served up just two cups of tea. The portions here are huge. Even if I was having this for an evening meal, there is no way on this earth I'd have this much food. This is rank. <laughs> Do you not worry about in the future, though, if you keep eating like this? Oh, yeah. Like, you're the same age as me, aren't you? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have to be honest, you do look a lot older. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I can't believe we don't have anything for breakfast or something until this afternoon. 
I could then ble- I can't believe how you got, I'm going to energy. How you got energy? It's day one in the feeding clinic for super skinny Haley and super size Rob. They're swapping diets in the hope that seeing someone else tackle their impossible portions will kick-start them into a healthier way of eating. It's lunchtime. Oh my goodness. As she's presented with a huge dinner of roast beef, potatoes, mash, carrots, peas and gravy. Whilst Rob has to be content with a salami stick. Basically, I was given, for my lunch, long, thin salami meat. That was it. One. It's really hard to chew this with 60. <laughs> Just suck on it, it'll last even longer. The sparring continues across the dinner table. Are you not looking at this thinking you wish you had some of this? No. Nope. Not at all? Not at all. Not even hungry? No. OK. Every day you have a cooked meal for lunch, do you? That's why I have one day a week, one meal. But I have about a few times a week I cook dinner. A few times a week? Yeah. One thing that Rob can't deny is his sweet tooth. And for Haley, there are three desserts. Bakewell tarts, trifle and crumble. All with cream, of course. Oh, my God. There you go. Thank you very much. How do you feel that you haven't got anything? I'm fine. Honestly, I am fine. <laughs> it's a testing meal for food dodger Haley. Are you enjoying that? This is my last meal. I have another one after that. No, this is my last no, one. No, I have another one. You, you meant teach me a diet. OK. Hayley's last meal of the day is a double helping of Thai green curry with rice and a glass of cola, whilst Rob's meal is slightly less substantial, a slice of goat's cheese and a sweet. I can't believe how small you eat this. I was clearly just busy. Oh, busy? Mm-hmm. Hayley got me basically an empty plate with a slab of goat's cheese of that size and a sweet of that size. Oh, are you trying to kill me off? <laughs> I think you are. Are you going to eat your? I'd love to say yes, but I don't think there's many people in this world that could eat that much proportion for dinner. It's quite shocking how much you eat. Let's be frank. But having been confronted with her measly diet, which is putting her chances of having children in danger, Haley has begun to grasp the need for change. So far, I'm learning that I am capable of eating food. No one's making me not eat. It's purely down to me. And my excuses are rubbish at the moment. I need to start looking after myself. She needs to push herself a bit And tomorrow, I think she will do it. Morning. All right. Very well, thank you. Fancy some toast? It's day two in the feeding clinic, and while Rob sits down to a solitary cup of tea, Haley attempts a sugar-loaded blend of toast with jam, six chocolate biscuits, orange juice and more cola. How are you enjoying your tea? How can you see this is energy to start your day? I get that. It's not... It's rubbish. Yeah. I've always been taught breakfast is the most important meal. You can't call this a breakfast. No. After having my toast and stuff, I've started to perk up a little bit. So, really strangely, in a completely backward way, it has shown me that breakfast does actually perk you up a little bit as well. My energy levels now have actually started to increase after breakfast, which is a really, really nice feeling. Time for their last supper, and Rob and Haley are turning a corner in their attitudes towards food. Haley has served a huge helping of two portions of chicken curry with rice and chips, whilst Rob gets to tuck into two chicken drumsticks and a pile of crisps. Are you going to eat much of that? Yeah, I think I will. Do you think you're going to be satisfied after eating that? Yeah. You do? Yeah. Oh, good. It's actually filling me up. Is it? Mmm. I found this meal so much easier than food yesterday. Kind of enjoyed it as well. Mmm and felt that I've sort of eaten loads more than I would have done before. Why are you going to eat more when you leave here? I think the most important thing I've learned is eating breakfast and lunch. You know, regardless of what it is, to eat something. I really enjoy this meal. I'm comfortable full. Good. That's really nice to hear. 
So the time has come for Haley and Rob to leave the feeding clinic, armed with their healthy eating plans. I've gone from barely touching a meal to now not even mentioning it, just getting down and eating it. It was really sort of quite impressive. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. Well, goodbye then. Good luck with everything. Keep in touch. See you in a few weeks. Bye now. Bye. It's been nine weeks since cake-loving Rob and chronic food dodger Haley left the feeding clinic. But hyperactive Haley's not been running around quite as much just lately. I'm on crutches because I ran up the stairs without turning and ran straight into a wall and, yeah, broke my toe. It's time to find out if they've stuck to the healthy eating plans. Today, I'm hoping to see a good sort of half a stone would be nice, sort of anything up to that would be fantastic. So how's it all been going? You're looking very well indeed. Thank you. Yeah, it's been going really, really well. I've really enjoyed it as well. I started getting more and more hungry, more regularly, which was really different for me. I mean, clearly you're oozing confidence because you look great. It's much easier to look in the mirror now rather than seeing sort of skin and bones. I'm actually sort of seeing a bit more of a shape, which is lovely. You mentioned that you'd quite like to have children in the future. Do you feel that you have a more healthy base from which to do that now? Yeah, I mean, before it really worried me. It wanted, I wanted to have it as part of my future plans. Now, as I'm really getting the hang of looking after myself, I know that's definitely going to be able to be in my future. That's really good to hear. Good, I'm delighted. Thank Thanks, Hayley. Thank, Thank you. you very much for your help. Hello. Hi. Before their results, Rob and Hayley are reunited. How are you doing? Oh, how are you doing? You're looking well. well. Thank you. You look really healthy. And you, you look, you're looking younger as well. Oh, thank you. <laughs> right, Rob, you old charmer, you. Listen to you go at her. Doesn't she look great? Yeah, she does. I think you've both done me proud. I have to say, I'm going to put you out of your misery right at the beginning and tell you you've done all right, both of you. Hayley, I'm going to start off with you. And you put on six pounds, wow. which is amazing. And three inches round your hips. Amazing. And you're going to love this one. Two inches on your boobs. Happy? <laughs> yeah, I thought you would be. And you ain't done so bad either, mister. I was worried about you, Rob. I'll be honest. I thought the sense of denial that you had was so big. But you've done all right. You've lost one stone, ten pounds. You're getting on for two stone already. <laughs> and ten inches you've lost off your tummy. Really? And five from around your thighs, which is amazing. Yeah. Three inches on my hips and two inches on my boobs. That is exactly what I wanted. I said boobs and bum, that's all I'm after. So I'm really, really chuffed with that. One year ago, six stone 12 Haley survived on a diet of tea and sugar, totaling just 850 calories a day. What does your partner say about all this? He always says he loves me or whatever, but he wants me to be healthy as well. Twelve months on, we're back to see if Hayley has ditched her terrible diet for good. Yeah, now I feel like a completely different person. Hayley's eating habits have gone from virtually extinct to healthy portions. Since I left the feeding clinic, we also got given a diet plan, which I followed to the letter. Hayley, breakfast ready. Breakfast with a cereal bar in the morning and a yoghurt. Then lunchtime will be a sandwich, um, a yoghurt, a packet of crisps and some fruit. And in the evening it'd be meat and vegetables, sort of potatoes. Chris started making my breakfast, which was great. And then he'd pack my food for the rest of the day. I just couldn't face it. See ya. Bye. Have a nice day. And it was just kind of constantly being badgered. Chris would ring up and say, did you have your lunch that I packed? And the support's been incredible. What about those spoons of sugar and cups of tea? I haven't probably had a spoonful of sugar since leaving the feeding clinic. Um, cut down my cups of tea, so I enjoy a cup of tea. I don't just have it just to kind of keep me going. Um, but yeah, no more sugar. When Hayley checked into the feeding clinic, there was one very important reason for change. I wanted to fall pregnant, and the only way I was going to fall pregnant was to eat. I love eating now. I've got so much more energy than I did before. And to top it off, um, you know, I'm now expecting a baby, which is fantastic. We've been getting things from months now just to make sure that everything's done. We've got some lovely little outfits. I love my daddy, he's my hero. We've got a play mat here 
um, that we've bought for him. We've got the cot here that's ready to go up, um, but still in its box. Yeah, being in the nursery, it makes it makes me realise that we've actually kind of achieved that goal. We're going to have a little boy come in, and yeah, I can't, couldn't be more excited. Hayley's husband, Chris, also couldn't be happier. She's got that sparkle back in her eyes again. I'm so proud of her, it's unbelievable. Not only has she put on weight, she's put on baby weight as well. So it's like, it's brilliant, absolutely wonderful. I love my new life, it's brilliant. New life is, is great, I really enjoy it every day, it's just fun. And so, you know, long may it continue. By 2020, it's predicted that a third of adults in the UK will be obese. In some American towns, they've already hit this frightening statistic. Dr Christian has come to the fat fatherland, investigating the shocking reality of life in one of America's fattest cities. Evansville, Indiana. Because patients here are getting bigger and bigger, regular ambulances can no longer cope to transport them. So the hospitals have had to call in the services of these new supersized ambulances to transfer their obese and super obese patients. This bariatric ambulance, or jumbulance, is one and a half times bigger than a normal American ambulance, costs a quarter of a million dollars, and can cope with patients weighing up to a hundred stone. In the UK, bariatric vehicles are already hitting streets across the country. So I'm just following the bariatric ambulance as it goes to pick up a lady. She's super morbidly obese. She needs to come into hospital for some treatment because she's got terrible swelling, edema, water retention in her legs. The lady in question is 48-year-old Stacy, weighing in at around 35 stone. Getting her to hospital is no mean feat. Stacy is harnessed to a supersized double stretcher. You feel secure, safe? Right, yeah. Before being lifted by a specialist winch that's usually used to recover broken down cars. Looking after Stacy is lymphedema therapist Stephanie Retter who's going to be gently massaging the huge quantity of fluid that's built up in Stacey's legs back into her upper body. Did you ever imagine you'd need all of this? Sometimes I wish I didn't, you know, I didn't have all this fluid because it does cause a lot of problems. You who work on the front lines dealing with it, why do you think it's happening? Too much convenience and not enough self-responsibility in many cases. I think that we've all just succumbed to fast food and we drive our car two blocks down the road instead of walking. Do you think you're reaching crisis point with all this? I think we're reaching a crisis level and it's getting worse. And that's a frightening thought. And with a fast food joint on every corner, there's a lot to tempt the people of Evansville. So where do they seek redemption? Evansville falls within America's Bible Belt and has even more churches than it does restaurants. So the parishioners of Bethel Temple have decided to call on God's help to win the city's battle against the bulge by mixing fitness with faith. Thank you, Lord. We pray that you will give strength and energy as the people in this room are working on body, mind, and spirit. Amen. Amen. All right, so we've got God in our souls, our spirits. Is everybody ready to work out? Yeah. All right. Seen it all now. Jesus and weight loss. Why not? We're doing joy jumps. We're doing power praises, uh, prayer arms like this. You're looking up to God. We feel that God can empower you to do maybe more than what you would have been able to do otherwise. Lift your knee up. What do you get out of this? Um, helping me lose weight. Why the sort of the gospel and the weight loss? How do they work together? because God's there helping you get through it. I like the fellowship. I want to be healthier, and they don't judge you for being overweight, and they encourage you, and they're with you every step of the way.
Well, I have to admit, not being a religious man, I was a little bit sceptical about this. But you know what? This was a good, high-energy, keep-fit class. And if you live in a country where you eat the sorts of foods that they have here, you need to be doing this regularly. And this is just what these guys are doing. It's perfect. Back in the UK, Dr Christian's continuing his own efforts to kick eight super sizes and eight super skinnies into shape. And he's ready to pair up the next two willing victims. So, Jeff, I'm going to pair you up with Josh. Come on. Hey, Josh. Uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, yes. I cannot believe the difference in Rotherham. That's a toothpick. I don't know much about Jeff's diet yet, um, but I'm hoping the plate isn't as big as his belly. Jeff lives on an excess of carbs and comfort food, whereas Josh's favourite food choice is sugary sweets. I'm hoping that by bringing these two extremes together, they're going to learn from each other that there is a healthy middle ground. Morning in Rotherham, and it's breakfast time for 49-year-old Jeff Milton. Hello, love. Can I have a large beast, please? There you go. I can't explain it. I can't explain why I would be this weight with the food I eat. I view it as quite a healthy diet, to be honest. Nothing, not too excessive. But the scales disagree, and Jeff weighs in at a mighty 30 stone 12 pounds. My normal lunch would be several sandwiches, probably four or five slices of bread, maybe six sometimes. Jeff loves a loaf, and it doesn't stop at lunch. If there's a period where I'm having to wait for a meal, I'll have just something just to keep me going. But nothing too great, maybe just, you know, a small sandwich. I don't think it is a lot of bread. I think it's just a lot of everything. <laughs> Jeff, however, hasn't always been this big. There's been two periods when I've lost a lot of weight. In the 1980s, I lost 10 stone. I went from 25 stone down to 15 stone. And recently, uh, I went down from about 35 stone to about 25 stone, 24 stone. But Jeff's 10 stone weight loss was short-lived. Last year, he took redundancy. And if being without a job wasn't stressful enough, both Jeff and his wife Joanne fell ill, leaving Jeff housebound. When I found myself stuck at home for months on end, I went down the, the path of uh, putting weight on again. I think Jeff's a comfort eater, and I think I thought, oh, well, I'll have another slice of bread. I'm really suffering. My knees are killing me all the time now. I, th I don't think they're really designed to have 30-odd stone bearing down on them. I need to lose this weight. But a lot of friends I know, who are a lot smaller than me, who have never had a weight issue, eat twice what I eat. I really don't understand the size that I am. But before the feeding clinic doors open, Dr Christians prescribed Jeff a supersized wake-up call in America, in the form of 39-stone Texan, Alan Yoda. I can't walk to the end of the yard without getting exhausted. I can't stand in the kitchen and cook the meal. You're sitting on the porcelain throne and you're so big that you have to try four times as hard as a normal person just to get yourself clean. Jeff's been sent to meet Alan for a large dose of his future, should he continue denying his dreadful diet. Hi, I'm Alan. I'm Jeff, nice to meet you. And to make sure Jeff takes every drop of his American medicine, Dr Christian's also en route. I hope really this is going to give him the incentive that he needs to make sure that he gets it right this time and that that weight stays off now for the rest of his life. It may be hard to believe, but in 2001, Alan had his stomach stapled. I went from a high of 42 stone all the way down to a 15 or a 16 stone in about 16, 17 months. A mammoth weight loss of 27 stone. But even bariatric surgery couldn't stop this food fan. A few years later, Alan had munched his way out of his stomach staple back to morbid obesity and into a heap of health problems. 
I've been recently diagnosed with sleep apnea and it's meaning when I'm trying to sleep, I can't breathe because the weight is bearing down on the lungs and I'm not getting enough oxygen. I have Barrett's disease, which is essentially, it's, it's an erosion of the esophagus and that's because I'm eating so much food that it, it won't fit in my stomach and so it's up on the esophagus and that acid is is literally not only digesting the food, it's digesting me. Just as they sit down for a supersized lunch, Dr. Christian appears. How are you? Surprise. You did surprise me. Jeff. Yeah, hello. Alan, I'm Hi, Christian. I'm Alan. Nice to meet you. Dr. Christian wants to show Jeff just how being in denial has damaged Alan's health. So you're rattling with the amount of pills you're taking. You have got various blood pressure things here. Fruzamide, I mean, that's a water pill. That makes you pee off extra fluid and keep your exactly. blood pressure under it helps control. helps with the edema in my legs. And with the edema in your legs. Jeff, have a look at this. If I just push hard on here for a while and then let go, Oh, you've just got a nice fingerprint in there that's going to stay there for a little while. And what I've done is just pushed all the fluid out of the tissues. It's a matter of gravity. You know, you're standing up, the fluid's down there. Your heart's got to pump that up. And since it's already pumping through all the rest of this, it just can't do it's a good down. job of getting it out of your legs. And so you get this. Only eight stone behind Alan and catching up quickly, Dr Christian's hoping Jeff has now seen enough. It has been uh, challenging and there's been a, uh, that constant nagging thought in my head that, you know, I'm not too far behind him on the route. And um, I, I, I want you to acknowledge that bit because yeah. I think it's very easy to go America, another world, another country, big yeah. person, not me, you know, and actually it is very, yeah. very much your future yes. if, if you don't change yes. this. Jeff's time in Texas is up. I've experienced some thought-provoking stuff on the trip. It's, it's hammered home the fact that there needs to be changes, yeah. It was good for both of us. Sometimes the best medicine doesn't taste good. Back in the UK, the feeding clinic is ready and waiting for supersized Jeff and super skinny Josh. Dr Christian's hoping the shock of seeing each other consume their shocking diets will spur this duo into changing their ways. The two-day diet swap starts here. Eating an average of four loaves of bread a week, Jeff is a colossal 17 stone overweight, putting him at risk of a heart attack, stroke and type 2 diabetes. So where do you think you're going wrong currently with your diet? Oh, if I knew that answer, I suppose, I suppose I'd, uh, I'd have the secret to, uh, uh, to to stop all this, but... I mean, there's only one thing that makes you fat, and yeah. it's food. I'm just going to read out from your food diary the times during the day when you ate. Yeah. OK, listen to this. 7.30 in the morning? Yeah. 9 o'clock? Yeah. 11.45? 12 o'clock? 12.30? Yeah. 12.45? Yeah. 6.30? 7. 11. Yeah. Midnight? Yeah, yeah. OK? So you are definitely constantly grazing. Good, good, There's good, stuff good, going yeah. in all the time. So you are definitely overeating mm -hmm. in okay. ways that I think you're not realising. Yeah, I can't argue with the fact that I'm definitely can't overeating really somewhere. That, At 30 stone 12 pounds, we've calculated Jeff's consuming 4,464 calories a day, a thousand of which are just on snacks, nearly Josh's entire intake of 1,300 calories a day. It's time super size and super skinny swap diets. And Jeff's day starts off reasonably well. A big bowl of cereal with semi-skinned milk versus nothing. Unfortunately for you, I don't eat breakfast. Don't you? No. Oh. It just seems to be a never-ending bowl of cornflakes. Josh gets there in the end, but breakfast isn't over yet. Sometimes when my wife comes in later, I'll do a, a breakfast into, for a, a little bacon sandwich. Little? Buns when it's well, little, yeah. <laughs> I'm a bit speechless. And it smells. It's mainly for the wife, but I'll join in because it'd be rude not to. So enjoy, tuck in. <laughs> After that big bowl of cereal just an hour before, 
Josh is finding it tough tucking in. You have a standard breakfast, yes. which is a bowl of cornflakes, and you're not meant to then go yeah. and have another breakfast. Yeah, well, I, well, as I said, I wouldn't do it every day. This is not a daily thing. I do like them. I like the, I like the taste of a bacon sandwich. Bacon and egg, bacon and tomato. Bacon, egg and tomato. Jeff on empty, Josh on full. Will there be any let up at lunch? There you go, Josh. A nice sandwich for your dinner. There you go. No respite for Josh. <laughs> well, it's about as big as my arm. <laughs> <laughs> and for Jeff. I'm afraid I don't usually have lunch, so that's why you've got nothing. Oh, well, bloody hell. <laughs> it's little wonder you're thin then. Four o'clock, and for the first time, there's something on the menu for Jeff. So it's coffee with three sugars versus two ham sandwiches. And this is just another snack. Well, this was, um, well, basically, yes, if it would be a, yes, yeah. Can't do it. I actually can't do it. I can't do it. And it didn't seem that much during the day. I dread to think what the next thing, because I honestly can't remember. I just hope we didn't go to the chippy that night, because it'll kill him off. It's dinner time. Josh gets a cheesy pizza and salad, whilst Jeff is given a chicken burger and fries. Well, actually, I, I don't feel very hungry. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Josh may have successfully polished off the cheesy pizza, but day one isn't over yet. Josh, Josh, you wait. I've got a bowl of cornflakes for you. Are you joking? No. <laughs> and I hate, I'm hating this. The late night snack hasn't gone down well. I can't stay in bed. I can't stay in bed. I need to go out. <laughs> Day two of the diet swap, and breakfast is four slices of wholemeal toast versus a bag of sweets. I mean, you had six meals yesterday. Mm. Six meals. I don't understand how someone could eat that at one o'clock in the morning. Wasn't you satisfied from your tea? It wasn't, it wasn't a satisfied job. It was just I was watching the telly or whatever it was that night and I had it, you know. So you didn't need it? No. Didn't need it. Don't need half the stuff, you know. It's just too much, the volume's too much, the quantities are too much, the frequency's too much. Hands up. And I, I, I can see that now from the way I've been throwing food at you for the last two days. It's the last supper for Jeff and Josh. It's a porker portion of shepherd's pie and peas versus pepperoni pizza. Wow, our last meal. I am a little bit shocked. Um, before we came downstairs to the dining room, yeah. and I was thinking, I'm actually hungry mm. for food, not for sweets, for food. Mm. And that's like an experience that I've never felt before. Say so you're 20, what, 22, 23, it's, it's a big thing, that, isn't it? If you've never really felt hungry for food before. So, well, in that case, it's congratulations. Josh is ploughing through his shepherd's pie no problem, and the last 48 hours have had a positive effect on Jeff's appetite too. Actually, I'm struggling with this. <laughs> now that's what you call a super skinny beating a super size. Diet swap done. I think it's finally hit home that the amount of food that I eat is, is putting on the pound, so I've got to uh, now get it off. Once and for all. Well, it's been nice meeting you. You too, that's it. A couple of months. There you go. Thank you. Cheers. No worries. It's been 11 weeks since bread loving Jeff and sweeterholic Josh left the feeding clinic. It's time to find out if they've stuck to their healthy eating plans. Slightly nervous, looking forward to seeing officially what I've done. I've got a little target in my head which I want to go for and hopefully I'll achieve that. That'll be a nice surprise today, yeah. So how's it been, Jeff? It's been good. I've not been hungry at any time. 
Um, I've, I've ate well, and I feel as though I'm losing weight. When you were in the feeding clinic, um, there was possibly a slight sense of denial or, or not really understanding why the weight was going on and where you were yeah, going wrong. Yeah. What do you think about that now? I was doing it wrong. And I, and I wasn't accepting that I was doing it wrong. And the effect of that was the weight. Well, that's good. I mean, you, you, you had a lot of work to do, essentially, didn't you? And particularly up here, I think, thinking about why and really yeah. accepting that you weren't always getting it right. And yeah. that's a difficult thing to do is, yeah. you know, and it sounds like you've done it. And I hope it's working well. We'll find out. Time for the gents to be reunited. Hey, Josh. Yeah. You're well. <laughs> how the devil are you? OK, how are you? you? Yeah, you not bad, thanks. How are you doing? Yes, yeah. I, I, can, uh, I can instantly see a, a major improvement. Can you? Oh, good stuff, yes. It look is. as though you put a bit of bulk on, it's a, you know, you, you're following the face. Right, gang, here I am. Happy to see each other again? Yeah, brilliant, yes. You are talking about you see us put it on in his face. Mm -hmm. I agree with you. How much would you have liked to put on? I would have liked around half a stone. I'm afraid you've come just short of putting on a stone. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> Astounding. And not only that, you've added three inches to your chest and you've added two inches around your arms. So it's fantastic. Really well done. Well done, mate. <laughs> well done, <sir. laughs> what would you have hoped for, Jane? Um, a, a couple of stone. I think we can probably do a little bit better than that. Excellent. You've lost two stone and five pounds. Excellent. Oh, I'm pleased with that. Not only that, but you've lost something else as well. You've lost eight inches around your tummy. That would explain the baggy trousers, I suppose. That would explain why you're having to walk holding yeah, your trousers. Yeah, and that's, that's amazing. Yeah. I couldn't have asked, actually, for better results from either of you. You've done me proud. Thank you. Two stone five pounds. Really pleased with that. That's, that's, that's more than what I would have expected. Also, eight inch off my waist. I mean, that's another good thing as well. So, yeah, excellent. Really pleased with that. One year ago, Supersize Jeff checked into the feeding clinic. He was eating his way through 4,464 calories a day. I mean, there's only one thing that makes you fat, and yeah. it's food. Now, Jeff's ditched the daily bread and weighs in at 28 stone. That's nearly three stone less than when he first entered the feeding clinic. Since the feeding clinic, I've been um, very positive in the outlook. The diet, uh, again, I don't call it a diet, it's uh, the, the, the change in lifestyle is, is uh, working really well. I don't go hungry. Calorie savvy Jeff is now in control of his daily diet. Breakfast, porridge or a muesli bar or, or maybe a banana, something that goes with that. Um, lunch, it'll be a pre-packed salad. And in the evening meal, we'll have the spaghetti bolognese, we'll have the uh, stew, the, the steaks and things like that with a salad or something. And what about all that bread? 100 calories for a slice of bread. That was the biggest shock because I was simply unaware that it was 100 calories and I was having half a loaf a day. So that's 1,000 to 1,500 calories really on bread. So that was ignorance. That was just purely, total ignorance. The bread I've knocked on the head and the snacking of the bread has stopped completely. Getting active has brought positive changes to Jeff's life. I am more active. Now I feel as though I've got a bit more energy again for the weekend. I've come back to, to the swimming now and uh, you know, and I'm slowly increasing it. I'm, I'm getting up to, I'm up to about 50 odd lengths now. We're nearly at the mile now, and that's in one session. A year ago, Jeff wasn't working, and he spent his nine to five getting stuck into food. When I was at home, um, the fridge was literally 10 foot away. I, that, that is always a temptation. Since I left the feeding clinic, I'm, uh, I'm with a new job with the Environment Agency. Um, Totally enjoying it, feel a lot more content in myself. If you're happy in yourself and you're and you're happy with what you're doing, then there's not the you know, there's no comfort eating involved there. Jeff's wife Joanne has seen his weight yo-yo before. So does she believe that this time the weight loss will last? I think that the, this diet is more healthy than previous diets that he's ever been on seems to be losing weight, I've noticed the difference in that. So, certainly watching what he eats. I don't think Jeff will yo your diet again. I think it's set for life. A new job and a new outlook has helped Jeff with his diet overhaul. 
and he's learning that slow and steady wins the race. I know I've got that confidence that I'm, I've got a control over what I eat. I'm, I'm doing things right and, and, and I know I'm on target and I'm, 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 uh, I'm doing things as I should be doing. Next week, from the terrible twos to the terrible teens, all the tips and tricks a parent needs to win the battle of bedtime. Bedtime Live, brand new, next Tuesday at 8 o'clock. Past my bedtime, that. Next tonight, bedtime must be a nightmare for the 16 kids and counting. <laughs>